Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today we have a wonderful guest I want to introduce to you, and this is Ariel Spring. After experiencing multiple traumas as a teen and beyond, including sexual assault, domestic violence, and becoming homeless, Arielle took it upon herself one day. She looked in the mirror and she got on her knees and she concluded that as low as she could allow herself to go, this was it. She wasn't going to go any lower. She began her journey to accomplish her goals and her dreams in life. And through hard work and dedication, she discovered her true self. She is a certified professional life coach and health coach, and Arielle has just recently launched her new book, When Birds Sing, My Journey from Tra Trauma to Triumph. We are so um, honored to have you on the show. Why don't you tell people a little about yourself and about what you do? Well, it's an honor to be here today with you, Stacy. Thank you for having me. Um, so you gave a wonderful introduction about myself. I would describe myself as a living example of a phoenix rising. Um, I began my life in an idyllic setting surrounded by loving parents and a sibling and was doing very well um, studying classical piano. And then I experienced some uh, sexual assaults when I was just 16. Wow. And uh you know it it i didn't tell anyone like so many women exactly and i was so young and naive that you know i didn't really know how to handle it and then i had another trauma where my piano teacher just up and died so mm. it was a big mentor yeah and those assaults, I took on the responsibility of them, like so many victims do. Right. That sent me on a two-decade downward spiral because it was untreated PTSD that we now can understand. But back then, you know, they really didn't understand PTSD whatsoever. Right. And so tell people a little bit about post-traumatic stress disorder, what it, what it is and how some of the signs that people could look for. Cause some people, you know, they have it, they don't even realize that they have it, you know, and you know, what are some of the things that people notice changes in their behavior? Um, what are some things that people could look out for? Yes. Um, that's a really great question. Uh, nightmares, rumination which is your mind looping over and over the event and you can't um, stop thinking about it uh anxiety was a big one for me mm -hmm. i developed a ton of anxiety isolation um it can get to the point where you're isolating some victims probably can even develop agoraphobia where they can't go out of the house definitely social anxiety that you become fearful and untrusting of everyone in every social situation. And, um, and so those are some of the signs, the warning signs. Also, you can find yourself self-medicating through drugs and alcohol. My big self-medicating tool was people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually got involved in a lot of relationships right. uh, to soothe the pain, unbeknownst to me, of of the PTSD. Now, and of you, course, that exacerbated it. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you find yourself going into healthy relationships? Because a lot of people, I find, when they go through traumatic events in their life, you know, unconsciously, they find themselves in a relationship that is also um, that has dysfunctionalism and has um, issues that are not healthy for that individual. So do, were you going into healthy relationships or were you finding yourself going into really bad relationships? The latter. And that is described in detail in my book, When Birds Sing. Um, yes, Stacy, I went into a two de decade downward 
trajectory of bad relationships from bad to worse. Yeah. Um, even in my early 20s or late 20s, I got involved and married someone who I got abused by emotionally, physically, and uh, spiritually for four years. Wow. I and Oh, Even ahead. though I, so that exacerbated my already bad PTSD and right. catapulted me, but I was able to get the courage to leave. That's great that you had the strength right. because so many women are afraid to leave because they get codependent, they lose self-esteem, they fear change, and they don't think they can do it on their own. And they stay in the relationship and they continue to get abused by that individual and their, their PTSD and their emotions, their life is, is just slowly eating away at them and they fall into depression. And I'm sure you probably fell into depression at some point. And, you know, it's just a, it, it's, it's, it's like you're digging yourself into this, this slow, this destructive hole in a sense. That's really well put, Stacy. I actually developed a paranoia where I thought he was poisoning my food. Mm -hmm. And this catapulted me into realizing that I was becoming very ill. When I saw that mental aspect of it, that somehow jolted me. You know, even though I was getting hit and verbally abused and emotionally abused, it was that moment of paranoia where I was like, oh, I I've got to get out of here. You know, I'm going yeah. crazy. Right, right. <laughs> that actually um, allowed me to then put my safety plan in place and execute it well, how did on you my own without, without family. or. How did you get the strength to actually leave? Because you were at that point where you were in that hole you were you know your life was pretty much you you just you had you had probably the low self-esteem you were going through the paranoia you were going through all these negative emotions how did you get finally get that emo that strength to say i had enough i'm gonna leave i'm gonna take a chance i'm gonna do i'm gonna do that change you know because you know many people don't because they they're afraid how did you get the strength to do it? I was able to keep a really good job at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked with um, an individual who was mentoring me on the side. Right. I had confided in he and his wife about my situation. And he. it was through that networking with healthy people that allowed me to get the strength. Without that person... Right. I don't know. So, you know, let's take that a big one point. person. <laughs> it, it only takes one person to help you and it could change your whole life. And, you know, so I, I think we need to stress how important it is to reach out. You know, people are afraid to reach out, but, you know, don't be embarrassed. Right. You know, yeah. you change your life. Don't you think? What had happened was, um, I had a, a very bad facial injury and I wasn't able to go to work from the abuser. Right. And this uh, uh, intern, I worked at a hospital, came to my apartment and he's, and my ex answered the door and he said, you bring Ariel here now. I'm not leaving until I see her. Oh, that's wonderful. And from that moment on, I started meeting with him. He would have me over for dinner. And um, I gained more and more strength to call the police when I would be assaulted by him. Right. Which started sending him a message that I was gaining strength. And then one day I called him at work and I said, when you come home, I won't be here anymore. I'm leaving you and hung up the phone. That's wonderful. I already had my my apartment, and I left with only garbage bags, Stacy. I didn't even have suitcases. I left wow. all the furniture that was mine, and I walked out. And I want women to realize that nothing's more important than you, not your clothes, not your belongings. And sometimes you just have to leave with yourself. Right.
And that's a very important message that, you know, sometimes you have to just put the past behind, behind you. Don't worry. Just focus on now and focus on what's best for you. Okay, now, I, now, I have yeah, one I, important question for you. Now, people that have families and they have children, a lot of people feel locked into the relationship because even though it's abusive, they have their children and they're afraid to leave because financially they don't know if they can do it or they feel that the children might suffer if they're broken from this family, even though it's dysfunctional and the children are seeing things that that are bad and a lot of people don't realize, but when they see bad behavior, even though they know it's bad, a lot of people will, children will carry those behaviors in, in their lives and the cycle will continue. So sometimes it's actually better, or I should say most of the time, it's better to leave the relationship and to teach the child that you're, you should not, uh, abusive behavior is a bad thing and you should not do that to other people. So the child doesn't repeat that behavior in their lives. Now, for, for, for a woman who has children and is afraid to leave because she has children, she's not sure financially if she can do it, or she's afraid how the children will re react if the, if the household is broken, what do you have to say to that? Like, what, what should what a person do in that situation? I have a pretty stern message for that, Stacy. In, in that every day that you stay in the abusive relationship, you are injuring your children more. And you're also showing them that you tolerate this type of behavior being done to you. So that doesn't allow the child to respect you It'll, it, it, it actually creates them to be codependent to take care of you because they see you can't take care of yourself. It's, it's really an injurious process to do as a mother to your child. The delusion is that, oh, I'll break up the home. I, I can't afford to leave. You can't afford to stay is right. my message. I, I think that's a great answer. And what should be the, the next step? Should they reach out to an organization? How can they get help? Because I'm sure there's financial resources out there to help people who are in a, a domestic relationship that's abusive. There are, and I actually will put more of those resources on my website, arielspring.net. I'm glad you brought this up today, Stacy, so that I can list those resources for women with children on my website. Yes, reach out to an organization. If you have a family member you trust, just to temporarily get out of the home, that's always a good solution. Um, when, Like they say, when there's a will, there's a way. Yes, yes. And that's so true. I, I agree completely with you. And just remember, ladies, you're stronger than you think you are. Yes. Never give up. You can do it. That's... You can take those kids out of this abusive situation and their lives will be forever changed when you do that. For you. Now, yes. I know that you're very big into self-love and you talk about self-love a lot. Now, explain to people why self-love is so important and why it was such a big factor in your life. Yes, yeah, self-love, I feel, is very associated with, for me, spiritually, because I feel like I was given the gift um, by God to acquire self-love. How I look at it is an ability to gain a, a look, step outside yourself and look at yourself. Right. This is called awareness or gaining consciousness. Mm -hmm. And once I was able to do that, I was able to start loving myself piece by piece. Right. So you got out of that denial stage. You 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 were actually accepted that this is going on. And you finally got to the point where I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm going to make a change. You become a... Uh, and I think this is important to stress, you know, you become as sick as the person who is hurting you. Right. In in a different way, in yes. that you become delusional. 
and you focus on well if they would just do this and they and you don't see yourself anymore you really just focused on the other person yeah and this ability to to look at yourself helps you look at yourself and see the reality of your own life right and what you have let it become and that's how i believe that self-care is formed through this self-love self-care acts spring forth from self-love and as you go further you you get more and more creative with your self-love self-care acts now i found like for a lot of people that i've spoken with um you know, they, they were put down a lot by the person that they were with. And they were like, you're nothing. You're never going to amount to anything. You need me, blah, 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 blah. And then after a while, after hearing it so many times, they believed it. And, you know, and then they, they kind of put themselves, they don't think they're, they think they're worthless because they're actually believing what the other person is telling them. Now, did you experience that in your relationship? I absolutely did in spades. I was called profane names daily. And I started out, you know, when I met him as one person. And when I got out, I was another person. Right. I was a person who had lost confidence and self-esteem. Right. I can totally relate to what you were saying. Um, and it also, there's an aspect of, you know, what people call gaslighting or crazy making that many abusers do too, um, as they're putting you down. It starts to make you feel like you're crazy because you're, you're like, no, I, I'm a great person. Why are you saying these things? Right, right. You don't, so you start to feel insane and, and, and start to doubt yourself start to doubt, start to doubt all your decisions so it weakens so, you mentally yes. it weakens you and then you start to overanalyze the situation probably and then you start to actually say well maybe this person is true what they're saying is true and that's when you probably start to go into that pitfall that we were discussing and you know all of it may not be conscious that you may be you know, some of it may be just be getting into your subconscious even that you start to believe it. But I was fortunate enough to, through God to um, have enough strength to, like I said earlier, hold on to my job, which was instrumental in me getting out. So step one, how did, with all the traumatic events that happened to you prior, how were you able to, like, what did you do to, to, to actually overcome all the traumatic events in your past and then to work on getting, getting, moving forward? Because you had so many things happen to you. One, you reached out and this gentleman helped you. And then you just left. And then from, from that moment, did you continue therapy did you continue self-love or maybe other methods also how did you get yourself to the point where you were looking in that mirror and you started to really love that person you saw and you felt that strength mm -hmm. and you were able to actually reach for the stars and actually get them feel like you could get them yeah my story goes on for quite a bit even after i left that abusive ex where i downward spiraled in more abusive relationships getting involved with drug addicts and you know the like and so unfortunately i didn't know that i had ptsd for some time after that but when i finally realized that i did the number one tip i have is find a really competent therapist mm -hmm. i actually do schema therapy which uh is a very specific therapy um it created for trauma and it it helps you um with the life traps or schemas that you develop even from childhood or other traumas and it helps you reparent yourself. Okay. 
And so other things that I do, because I'm really, because I am a certified health and life coach, I take a lot of supplements. Mm-hmm. So I'm not in on any pharmaceutical drugs. That's excellent. For, for PTSD induced anxiety, which I still have to this day. Mm-hmm. I take all supplements. I've researched them thoroughly. I work with naturopathic doctors and other healers. And I have developed a regimen to um, regulate my cortisol. Because when you're under a lot of stress through trauma and living a stress-filled life, mm-hmm. your adrenal glands take a huge hit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And so you've really got to, you know, beef those up and regulate your cortisol because otherwise you're not going to be able to sleep at night. And without a good night's sleep, you're not going to be able to heal. Oh, definitely. So that's uh, tip number two is be sure to take the supplements needed to feed the adrenals and also lower the cortisol throughout the day so that when you're at bedtime, mm-hmm. you're going to be able to get sleepy and fall That's- asleep all through supplements. It's amazing. I am a big fan of supplements. Supplements, I've been using supplements for decades and they have he- helped me tremendously. So I, I hear what you're saying. It's They're very effective and people don't realize, but a lot of pharmaceutical companies use supplements when they're making medications because they are like medications, but you have to be really careful. You know, like when you're taking supplements, if you're taking other medications for like cholesterol or for, you know, heart problems or anything like that, you have to just check with your doctor. But yes, supplements could actually help with stress and, and lots of other things. And I'm glad that you were able to find that cocktail of supplements to help you with your post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, do you have this on your website, all this information? Absolutely. So, yes, I have all my blog posts that I've written all this information in posted on my website, arielspring.net. Excellent. Now, I heard that you have just launched a book. Yes. Here is my memoir, When Birds Sing, My Journey from Trauma to Triumph. Oh, that is great. Can you tell us a little about what it's about? It is about my life's journey, Stacy. how I started out as a baby and child and, you know, through my teen years, all the way to uh, today. I think that's wonderful. You know, the the topics that, you know, we're discussing are so important because, you know, so many people are in um, very abusive relationships and they don't say anything. And when I was talking to an, an officer, we were discussing it about this. And he says most of his calls are from uh, from home residential homes that are people who are in abusive relationships and there is, you know, fighting, you know, uh, you know, um, physical, physical fighting and really bad abuse going on in the homes. And, um, you know, so many people are afraid to speak up. Now, did you ever go to any organizations or you just reached out to that individual and that individual? You, know, you said you went to a therapist. Now, how did you find that therapist, first of all? Like, did you go to an organization to find that therapist? Did you Google? Like, how did you get that therapist? How how were you able to find a good therapist that was able to help you? Yeah. Um, well, through the years, I went to many therapists and, you know, word of mouth, uh, Google. And if you're lucky enough to have insurance go on your insurance website and look for people in your plan if you have a mental health coverage and then that way you're only paying a copay so that can be very helpful that's how i found my schema therapist oh excellent you know people don't realize but you're a lot of insurance companies will pay for therapists if they feel it is medically necessary for that individual they will cover the the cost of the therapy session. And yes. I think that's very important. Now, did you ever reach out to any organizations for post-traumatic stress disorder? 
I I actually volunteered at um, the Domestic Awareness Women's Network when okay. I was in Seattle, and so I actually was a crisis group support uh, support group facilitator, and then started my own support group. I wanted to teach women how to transition from the victim mentality. Mm-hmm. Because I felt that was missing in the crisis group. Obviously, they were dealing with the crisis of, you know, what you were explaining a few minutes ago. Uh, These calls are coming in minute to minute. Right. Now, even though I had my domestic violence in the 80s, it's still going on. It's still going on. Isn't it crazy? Like you said, minute to minute. That's insanity. But yeah. it's, it's so prevalent in our society. Abusive and the continuum can start out with, he slapped me. But what you don't realize is that continuum can go from zero to 100 the next time. And he can try to kill you. Yeah. 100%. And you see, you know, women dying at the hands of their abuser almost daily now. It's It's running rampant. So... I did reach out to an agency and because I was in a place that I had got, you know, already achieved some of my own healing, I was able to give back. And that's also very important once you get out to give back. Right. Oh, 100%. I believe in that. Totally. I, you know, once I started doing things and I started because if it wasn't for people reaching out to me, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I'm sure you feel the same way. And so uh, when you're when you talk about your crisis center that you you created for yourself, what is the name once again? So people know uh, the name of it. Oh, I no longer do that. Word. OK, yes. But now so people can also if if they if they reach out to a crisis center, they could be referred the crisis centers, I'm sure, have referrals and they can give them other people's names for other different things according to what their needs are, too. Yes. And again, on my website, arielspring.net, if anyone wants to receive personal coaching from me, um, again, I'm a life coach and a health coach. So I'm looking at all aspects. Plus, I have the DV experience personally right. and I've done it professionally. Just, um, you know, message me there if you want to work with me. That's great. You know, so many people really need this help because so many people are afraid to talk or they're embarrassed or they're or they're afraid that if they say something and their spouse or partner finds out they're going to get hurt. And, you know, and it's, it's an endless cycle. And some people get to the point where they feel that, that it, you know, they deserve it because you know of the abuse and the and and the way they hypnotize this person's mind you know some people don't think they're worthy or anything else you know or they're just terrified to leave that's why it's really important to find a coach or a therapist that understands the dynamic yes that that is created within you and why you couldn't leave so that you're not being shamed at a therapist's office God forbid, Mm -hmm. um, because you can't leave because it is something that happens to you, like you described, you know, so many, so many people should realize that they are people out there that specialize in these specific topics. And this is, they should really be looking for not a generalized therapist, but a therapist who actually specializes in trauma in abuse in post a traumatic stress disorder so they ha- they can actually help them better so now if a person lives outside your state can you s- still help them absolutely i work remotely so it doesn't matter where you live and also on my website you'll find the domestic um, uh, violence hotline the national hotline number if you're in a crisis that moment you can just look up that number and call and talk to someone So there's all kinds of hotline numbers out there, you know, on my website or Google that women can reach out. It's so important to talk about what you're going through. Don't hold it in. Reach out. 
I, I think those are excellent points. Now, before we close this podcast, if you needed, if you only had to tell a person a couple of important factors, what would those factors be? What do, do people need to know that are very important when it comes to traumatic, when it comes to abuse? when it comes to sexual abuse, when it comes to physical abuse, when it comes to post-traumatic stress disorder, if people are going through this, what are important factors that they need to know, such as, you know, you know, you know, trigger points that you think would benefit them? First of all, I want to say, never give up. You can do it. You can leave. You can recover. You can get out of this. I'm a living example. Uh, trigger points are isolation. You must reach out to a hotline, to my website, anywhere you can, to a friend, a soul sister if you have one, anyone that you trust to let them know what you're going through. You don't want to be alone in this, and you don't have to be as yeah. long as you have the courage to tell someone what you're going through. Trust your gut. If this doesn't feel right, don't let someone talk you into that it's okay because you know best what you need. I think that's great. Now, show everybody your book once again and let them know where they can find this book. This is my book, When Birds Sing, My Journey from Trauma to Triumph, available on Amazon and BalboaPress.com. Excellent. And tell everybody your website once again, just so they don't forget. Ariel Spring, that's A-R-I-E-L-L-E Spring dot net. I think, you know, this is such an important topic. I think people are going to benefit so much from you and everything you're doing. I'm very proud of the work you're doing because this is a topic that so many people are going through and so many people are so fearful to speak up and to know that there is somebody out there that went through it like yourself and you're actually out there to help people. These are, They can reach out to you. They can find you on the internet. They can find you on your website and they can actually, that's the first step to actually maybe improve in their life and change in the rest of their life to from a from a horror story to a fantasy tale. And they could do it by just reaching out to you. And thank you so much for everything you do. I'm very proud of all the work you're doing. You're thank a wonderful you, person. Thank you. thank you. And it's, it's been so a good to be with you today. Oh, it's been a pleasure being with you. And I, I wish you great success. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you.